Hi, Kinesiology 4120. Welcome to our lecture on the needs analysis. So the needs analysis is a critical piece in designing our training program. In the needs analysis, we look at what is crucial to the sport from a physiological standpoint, from a biomechanical standpoint, an anthropometric standpoint, an individual standpoint, in order to help design our program in order to give the athletes exactly what they need from an adaptation standpoint. So we remember from our last section that the specific adaptations to the de imposed demands. So our training program needs to be specific to the adaptations we want, but how do we know which adaptations we need? Um, we know from our previous section, we have adaptations such as skill, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, um, anaerobic capacities in the single effort, repeated effort, um, aerobic capacity for the realm of lactate threshold or long duration endurance. And then we can combine and mix these based on time domains, how long we need those efforts for, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so <clears throat> realistically, what is the needs analysis and why is it important? Um, so first of all, the needs analysis is how we determine what a sport needs based on the demands of the sport and the position. Why it's important is because this guides our training plan. We need to know what the sport demands in order to know what we should demand of our athletes. And then lastly, how do we systematically approach it? We don't want to just haphazardly walk in and say, okay, I think they need this. I think they need that. We need some hard evidence. We need some examples. And we need to understand exactly what that athlete needs in order to create the perfect or the, the best possible training plan for these athletes. So we have to start with assessing the demands and needs of an athlete within their sport and within their position. So for example, a forward in soccer will have different demands compared to a goalie in soccer. Um, a forward in hockey compared to a defenseman in hockey is going to have different needs because their sport or their position is slightly different. And then if we look at something like rugby compared to tennis, those sports are completely different in their needs. So we need to change our training plan accordingly so that we can give the athlete the adaptations they need to be successful. Okay. Each sport is unique. Each sport is unique or each position is unique within each sport. Each athlete themselves is unique and therefore we need to determine what is necessary for these athletes within their sport and within their position. How do we do that? We do that by first reverse engineering the sport. So we have to look at the sport as a whole and look at how that sport is played. Okay, how does skill play in that sport? How does energy system demands play within the sport? Okay, are they sprinting, recovering? How long are they sprinting for? How long are they recovering for? How often do they have to do that within the sport? How often does each position need those type of requirements. How much strength is required? How much force do they have to be able to produce? Do they have to produce it at very fast rates? Do they have to produce it repeatedly over time? Do they have to move in different ways? We have to look at the sport and reverse engineer the sport and the position in order to best understand what is needed for that athlete. So here's how we systematically approach it. This is my method for uh, breaking down the needs of a sport. First, we start with the energy system demands and work our way down. If metabolism or the energy system demands, I break them into three categories, aerobic, anaerobic, and phosphagen-based um, energy system. So aerobic, we can look at this as endurance or long duration endurance aerobic capacity from in terms of lactate threshold. So being able to work um, at lactate threshold or near lactate threshold for extended periods of time. Or for the 
demands of recovery. Um, so having a large aerobic base of fitness will allow faster recovery within training, within the game, um, and between training sessions. So you may need an aerobic base just for the fact that there is recovery required. Uh, if we look at anaerobic, I look at this as more the glycolytic uh, portion of anaerobic energy systems. Do they need anaerobic endurance where they're working at the uh, far bounds of time when it comes to uh, their anaerobic system? Are they working for 60, 90 seconds straight? Um, do they need anaerobic power so they're able to produce high amounts of work using the anaerobic energy system? Or do they have to repeat it? Uh, do they have to have repeated uh, power? Do they have to have repeated endurance? Um, how long do they have to work for? These are all things that we have to think about for the anaerobic demands. And lastly, the phosphogen demands. Think of this as closer to um, short duration anaerobic uh, or kind of somewhere between uh, zero seconds and about 15 seconds of hard intense work, uh, maybe even as short as 10 if you're doing repeated effort. Uh, so phosphogen endurance would be how long can you stay in that phosphogen system? So how long can you be working at your highest energy output? Um, do you have to repeat that or is it a single effort based activity? An example here for uh, repeated effort, phosphogen could be uh, like a, a baseball, a hitter. So they take multiple swings within it at that, that swing lasts less than a second, but they have to be able to repeat maximum swing velocity <clears throat> every single time. Then we move on to the strength demands. So we can have strength endurance. So something like uh, a point within a sport where you have to produce force for an extended period of time. So an example here would be a rugby scrum. So those athletes have to be able to push against each other with as much force as possible for as long as it takes for that ball to exit the scrum. We could have repeated effort strength. So this could be something like a uh, defensive lineman that's coming in to block or, or, or an offensive lineman coming to block or a defensive lineman uh, trying to work around defenders. They have to be able to produce force, produce maximal force, and then be able to do it again once they come in contact with the next opponent. Uh, so this allows them to uh, have maximal strength and then repeat that as, as frequently as they can throughout the play or throughout the entire game. And lastly, one we could talk about is like single effort strength. So this would be something where you are only producing force for one specific movement. So think of powerlifting, weightlifting, shot put. Uh, these are all discus. These are all single effort strength bouts where you're not going to have to worry about recovering um, in between. There is some time between bouts, but it's nowhere near what you would need to, uh, that would cause a problem with your repeating your strength. Uh, so this would be something like a single effort strength. Then when we look into power, we know that power is a product of force and velocity. And this kind of falls into kind of mixing speed and strength because uh, force and velocity don't, don't happen in a vacuum. We have to worry about force and then we have to worry about how fast we're moving when we're producing that force. So we look at the force velocity curve, we've seen this before, and we look at each piece. So if we're looking at very slow velocities, we're looking at closer to maximum strength this is lower on the power spectrum, higher on the strength spectrum, and this is maximum strength. So think of this as like power lifting, um, where you're trying to move maximal resistance. Um, strength speed is closer to um, most of those sports that we looked at just prior where they need maximum strength um, or near maximum strength to be able to repeat it. It's very difficult to repeat 100 percent of maximum strength, but if we can drop that down to 80, 90 percent, uh, we could definitely repeat that. 
Then if we look down towards peak power, which is somewhere between 30 to 80% of uh, maximum, this is where we can really move the fastest and maximize the force output. So those, those pairings will be there together. Um, this is somewhere in this mid range. Speed strength is kind of on the faster end. So think of peak power and speed strength as uh, similar quantities when it comes to developing um, power. And then we have maximum velocity, which we'll, we, will, we will get to those. Uh, but this is really where power is made. Strength speed is a little slow. Speed strength is fast and forceful. Peak power is when we can get maximum force with maximum velocity. So when we look at different sports, we have to understand that sports require power in different forms. Um, so based on how fast they are moving when they produce that force, it will determine which aspect of power we're trying to produce. So someone who is maybe um, a basketball player, they're shooting or they're, they're trying to jump with as much force as possible within that short time period. So they would be working somewhere in this peak power speed strength spectrum. Someone who's a shot putter might work closer to peak power because they're trying, they have a longer time period to really produce that force. However, it's not maximum force because the implement is too light. Um, and then there's something there or different portions where we might need maximum velocity, which could be uh, while a running back is running, while we may need something like speed strength where these defenders are trying to chase him down and tackle him, um, producing force while they're trying to move at very high speeds. Okay. That transitions, uh, transitions us into speed, specifically speed for running. Um, so speed endurance, this is also linked closer to uh, anaerobic endurance. Um, this is the ability to run at maximum or, or top speed and how long you can maintain top speed. So this is more evident in uh, track athletes However, in larger field sport athletes, in large field sport athletes, you may require some level of speed endurance um, because you may be chasing down a, an opponent um, or you're on a breakaway trying to score, but it does take time to make it to top speed. So being able to maintain it does require a certain amount of distance. Uh, we can look at linear speed um, we can look at lateral speed, change of direction speed. Um, I like to, to pair the speed of running goes with acceleration. Um, so think of speed endurance as being able to maintain top speed. Um, linear speed is maximum top speed as well as acceleration components. Acceleration is going to be more necessary within um, field sports and really plays a role in change of direction. Um, and lateral speed is the ability to move um, not in the sagittal plane, moving side to side um, and maximally moving in that. We'll go through some examples in our lab to really understand what are the requirements within each sport. We can also look at speed when it comes to movement pattern specific. So things like rotational, lower extremity and upper extremity speed. Um, so someone who is a cricket player, a baseball player will require rotational speed while someone who's a puncher or uh, a field goal kicker will need lower extremity speed. Um, someone who's a throwing athlete, like a, maybe a quarterback, um, a water polo player, they'll need upper extremity speed. Um, so we have to look at that speed of movement from a movement pattern specific also. Then we'll look at someone's mobility and flexibility. How much range of motion do they need? Um, do they need it actively where they can move into that position under control or do they need to be able to um, passively go into that range of motion someone else is putting them there um, in order to be successful so we'll look at those in our lab also then we can look at the movement patterns required within the sport so is the sport played in the sagittal plane is it played in the transverse plane is it played in the frontal plane or do we have to mix those planes together? Okay, which one is 
more important for the needs of that athlete? Uh, not just what happens, but what do they need to be able to do? Do they need to be able to move laterally? Do they need to be able to move forward? Do they need to be able to rotate? What happens within the sport? Um, and then bring our way back into our training. The last one here is body composition. So we're looking at, do our athletes need more muscle mass like hypertrophy? Do we need to grow our athletes um, muscular size or is total weight what really matters? So, so do we need to have uh, a certain amount of body weight to enter in? Like in most combat sports, we need a certain body weight in order to compete in that fight or are we trying to maximize total mass? Um, someone who's um, maybe an offensive lineman in football may require more total mass. Uh, we want most of that to be lean mass or not as much that is adipose tissue. Uh, but in some cases, that it may be beneficial for that athlete because if someone has more total weight, they have more inertia, you're not going to be able to move that athlete as well. So that's why sumo wrestlers are so large. Hey, they're trying to resist being moved. The more mass you have, the harder you are to move. Okay. Some athletes, we, we may need just as much lean mass as possible while keeping them within a certain body weight. Um, most, uh, if we look at sprinters, we need to have maximal lean mass. Um, total body weight, we just want to make sure that it's not too much. Um, so some athletes may need hypertrophy at certain times within the year. Uh, maybe you maximize it at some point, uh, minimize it at others. Um, and try to maybe not lose as much mass, we'll talk all the way through body composition in our lab. Oh. And lastly, the individual needs. So this goes beyond the sport and the position. Now we're looking at the individual athlete that we have to work with. Uh, what are they good at? What aren't they good at? Uh, this is where testing comes into play. We'll go into text, testing and assessing our athletes in our next lecture what's important for that athlete, what's their level of competition, what do they need to work on, what don't they need to work on. Because we only have so much time to work with our athletes, we need to make sure that we are giving them exactly what they need to become better within their sport and within their position. Thank you, I'll see you next week.